So hello and welcome YouTubers and Doctor Who fanatics to my review of Last of the Cybermen by Alan Barnes which stars Colin Baker as the Sixth Doctor, Fraser Hines as Jamie and Wendy Pabry as Zoe for this full cast audio drama The Second Story from the Logan Doctor's trilogy. So if you want to skip straight to the review and you want to see how this audio is presented then there is the time. So for the cover art, if you bring it closer which I absolutely adore, I just love looking at this cover, what I really like on it so the sixth Doctor is the only colour part of the cover and we can see his intro by there as well. So I like that, you can't really picture Colin black and white. Anyway, we have the big cyber head by here on the cliff side which is in mainly known as episode 1 with a lightning strike. We have Jamie and Zoe with a circuit board where you see anti-computer systems and motherboards by there. And we have the second Doctor's intro by there as well, hiding behind the corner. So at the side, we have the sixth Doctor picture by there, Doctor Who Last of the Sidemen, 199. And very close to the release of The Secret History, a big finisher just been hyping it up with saying what's your favourite eighth Doctor story, sixth Doctor story and seventh Doctor story, so yeah, very close. And we have the back, it is directed by Kent Bedley, and we have the blurb on the story which I'll place in the description and the cast, which are very low. So if you open it up, we have the booklet and the disc, with disc 1 and disc 2 of course being exactly the same, and we have advertisements for other Six Doctor releases from 2014. And when we get the leaflet out, I've actually got two. Strangely, why can I criticise that? I got two leaflets, that's quite nice. I actually thought I had a thicker booklet and Big Finish went back to the old ways, because it was something like this, they were tucked in together, so I thought Big Finish made them bigger again, but no, I just had two of them. Yeah, well, thank you for that. Big Finish tricked me. Anyway, we have the next installment, which is the secret history and production credits by there. No lovely concept art or behind the scenes, they just don't do that anymore. It's due to money production and manufacturing. As you know, the third Doctor Lost Story, sorry, the third Doctor Early Adventures set and the Companion Chronicles Volume 1 will be featuring these dual cases, not the big box sets. It's just a business decision they did and I, I'm not gonna say I hate it or love it, it's absolutely fine. And yeah, you can flip it over if you desire, I can compare the two now, which is lovely. So yeah, choose wisely. So now we come to the review of Last of the Cybermen. It's been a very hyped story. Very hyped. Well, I would say the whole Logan Doctor's trilogy has been hyped, but I think this one has been more wanted and anticipated from the Big Finish fans. And when it was released, this is where tables turned completely upside down. There was reviewers coming in with bad feedback. And on one webpage, this, uh, this I think this is absolutely just terrible, this is. Giving it absolutely horrible feedback and just throwing negativity at it left and right and not going over the positives. And there are positives in there, I can see it, and they should as well. I don't really understand where all this horrible negativity is coming from. I've seen reviewers giving it 3 out of 10, 4 out of 10. I think that's utterly dishonest. Yeah, of course, there are things wrong with it. But the hatred and the huge negativity, I am not getting it. I sort of get it with the defectors, which the second part just does not work at all and the whole thing becomes absolutely stale. Some people even go as far as saying the whole thing doesn't work on the defectors. I, I personally like the, set, the first half, but the second half just, it loses the whole thing. But Last of the man is a whole different story. People saying the whole thing is absolutely rubbish. And you get the odd person saying it's a good piece of work, because there are reviewers who are saying it is good, but still has bits of things and issues with it, and that's exactly what is wrong with it. Before I state all of that, I will explain the plot of the story. Where it starts off as the main set on a dwarf planet, which is Belt. The Doctor told them to stay there and just walked off in the distance. It's been an hour or two, so they're quite worried. Then they go and find him. And just when uh, lightning strikes, the second Doctor is replaced by the sixth Doctor. And it would have been quite nice at the uh, at the start of it, where we had Fraser Hines doing the narration of the Doctor. Oh, sorry, not the narration, the voice of the Doctor. That would have been quite nice and a little bit of a nice feeling to a bit of Troughton in this story, as it is feeling like 60s era. 
I'm quite ashamed they didn't do that. They didn't do it with the defectors either. Maybe could have got Tim Trello to do a voice of the introduction and the end with John Poe's Doctor. But Fraser Hines was in this audio. I don't see why they wouldn't do that. It would have been a nice little theme to the story. But yeah, it's not really that bad it is, and it's just a little thing, you know, to the overall summary of it, that it does feature on the last of sort of Telos, which was 10 years ago since this story happened, so it isn't really presented in a linear order in time. And that was known as the Great, or the last act of the Great Cyber War. But I'll go through it part by part. So, part one, it starts off pretty normal. Nothing spectacular, just a straight line pretty much, that's pretty much it. Not a lot of cyber action, it's just getting everything ready I would say, and it's just building it up, getting introduced with some of the characters. Yeah, it's a very simplistic start to where it's not too much happens where something happens to Zoe, after he meets a Cyberman in pain for some reason, you never see a Cyberman in pain cry for help but and the doctor did say that never trust the cyberman ever but zoe was convinced that the cyberman was saying please so it was say half converted as they go to this location which is the big cyber head where the doctor and jb are found in the storeroom restrained with plastic cuffs and then zoe has been interrogated by xenox not an overall fantastic start to the story like what the defectors did, we made a massive mystery to it and I felt really good listening to it. But for this one, a simplistic start to it. Not really going too much anywhere, rather just get into this location and little things happen. And in part two, it isn't anything brilliant again. It's rather, again, rather standard. And there are little bits of cyber action here and there with the Cybermats, which I believe have a little part. And when you hear this part of the story, Zoe's going to the direction of playing a big part of the story, and she does, and you can sense that she will play a big part of the story because her mind is, you know, she's a very intelligent companion. But what about the chemistry with the Doctor and Jamie? It's a lot different. They're not like father and son with good old Trout and the second Doctor with Jamie. It's nothing like that. They seem like mortal enemies, and it seems quite awkward for them to be in the same area with each other. It just seems like they just won't get along at all. They threaten to punch each other. They don't agree on because this is a sixth doctor put into a second doctor situation so he may not do it as the same as him. So a lot of hatred between the two of them and some people find that okay. Some people don't really like that too much. I personally think it's fine. I think it's for a there's a bit of laughs and that, so I think Alan Barnes just wanted to go for a little bit more of a different approach of how the Six Doctor and Jamie react to each other. So part three and part four is it's very different from part one and part two. A lot of people say this is where the story gets kicking in. I rather when it gets to this situation of Cyberwall and Talos, felt rather sudden. It wasn't really built it up at all in part one or part two. I just feel like they're throwing it right at you. And I could have done a little bit more build-up because I just can't remember any strong build-up to Telos at all. So I think Alan Barnes should have worked a little bit more on his build and make the dialogue a little bit more better. To really make the listener motivated that they are going to Telos during the Great Cyber War. Make it a little bit more energetic. But anyway, there is another reason which I do not like Part 3 and 4. It's a complete copy and paste. I literally picture it. Some people compare it to Tomb of Cybermen, which I disagree on. I don't see it to be Tomb of the Cybermen at all. It doesn't mean it's on Telos. It doesn't mean it's going to be like Tomb of the Cybermen. I don't see that to be the case. It is a, literally a copy and paste of Evil on the Daleks. It seems almost identical. Yeah, this is where the action gets kicking in. I agree with that, but this didn't seem very motivating to me. But that's just my personal opinion. I still think there's great things with it, has very heavy continuity with it. From the 60s era, it feels chock-a-block with them. There's so many references such as the 10th Planet, the Mind Robber. It actually references that Jamie trilogy from City of Spies, Wreck of the Titan, Legend of the Cyberman, Power of the Daleks, the faceless ones, and of course Power of the Daleks with that stupid hat, <laughs> Trout and Mused. 
the dominators with a quark head. I don't this hit and misses me because I don't remember the the Doctor Jamie or Zoe taking a quark head from the Dominators story. So maybe that was something they overlooked, or maybe they even faced the quarks again. Oh my word! But I don't think that ever happened ever. Not even a big finish. So I don't remember the Doctor Jamie or Zoe taking a quark head and keeping it. So I think that was just something just to throw in there for fun, but it's a little thing they overlooked. The seeds of death and the wheel in space, and quite a lot, but space pirates. So yeah, that means you, we know when this story was chronologically in order. It's after the space pirates and before the war games. And also, there is another reference they make, which not a lot of people have seen, or sorry, captured in this one, which it actually references an unmade Doctor Who story from season 6 of Doctor Who TV, The Laird of McCrimmon, which was in t was going to be in season 6, but for two reasons it did not happen. And I won't go too much into that, because there's a lot of things to say about that story, but you can research it if you wish. A couple of sneaky references in there as well, which I do like. And what this was intended to do, I could see why. This was going to be after the invasion and before Revenge of the Cybermen. I'm supposed to go for that in the middle of it. Because they do sound like Revenge of the Cybermen voices just a little bit. And the invasion, so I can see why. So now we go to the characters of the story, which the main cast performed it brilliantly. In chemistry with the Doctor and Jamie just absolutely hating each other and don't agree. Not father and son whatsoever. They seem like mortal enemies. Uh, Zoe played a good role, but the supporting characters are unbelievably dull. Xenox, Findel, and Frank I found extremely forgettable, not interesting, and they just got overshadowed by what was happening in episode 4 with the Super Controller and the Great Cyber War. They just were completely forgotten, and I was not interested in them whatsoever. But Lanky, on the other hand, I'm just going to say, listen to it yourself, because it's probably one of the most oddest characters ever. But yeah, I'm going to go completely quiet on him, because there's something about him which I, I just hate. I absolutely hate it. But I'm just going to leave it to you. Just experience it yourself, and you'll go, this is just absolutely rubbish or absolutely hilarious. So overall, Last of the Cyberman is Marmite completely. You either love it or hate it. It doesn't work for many, and some people just criticise it so heavily, which I, I disagree on. It is an enjoyable story, it does a lot of things right, which I like, but does an awful lot of things wrong, and it doesn't feel very energetic, and it doesn't intrigue the listener that this is going to lead into the Great Cyber War, and it feels like a copy and paste of Evil of the Daleks. I would say I would give this a 6.5 out of 10, and I'm not going no higher, I was going to rate it a 7, but I think it's too high. Honestly, I think it's too high. Because with the fact is, I found the first half really enjoyable. But with this, it was rather... It just didn't have the push to it, to me, the whole thing. And again, part three and four was a, a bit better, absolutely. But still, I wasn't really enjoying it as much as I was going to hope it was. A lot of people was hoping this was going to be the almighty one out of monthly range for 2015 but honestly not it's uh it's a mixed bag but i do give it a positive rating because it does deserve it it does deserve a positive rating so 6.5 it does deserve so thank you very much for watching the review of last of the Cybermen. would i recommend it it's really up to you if you would spend 15 pounds on it i personally i wouldn't i wouldn't do it I would rather just check on Amazon and see if you can s snatch it for like 7 or 8 quid. Or if you got the subscription then you have nothing to worry about. So I'll see you in the next one and have a good one.